We're interested in sort of the intersection between um, humans and computers, you know, human computer interaction with Interact. And as a part of my journey around meeting various researchers, I, I met with Christian uh, and immediately sort of identified some natural research interests that we shared. It's been um, an interesting encounter of computer scientists, that's certainly not me and sociologists, so we've, we've been working on this in an interdisciplinary fashion, uh, combining a um, yeah, descriptive survey as to how people uh, consume news with a very interesting experiment that's been very much driven by the computer scientists in, involved in this, which has tried to capture and tap into what people do when they come face to face with, with news, fake or otherwise. One thing we're interested in, in sort of computer science perspective is the history of information, which you refer to as sort of provenance. Um, and the idea is, is you can look at the veracity of information. It stems from um, wine, actually, sort of, sort of wine bottles, uh, looking at, okay, well, where was that wine? Um, uh, where are the grapes from? Where was it manufactured? Where does it come from? So once you know that history, you know the sort of understanding of the wine. When you apply that principle to information, you can start to look at, okay, how is information manipulated, um, particularly uh, in the web and so on, and something like Wikipedia is a great example of that, how sources are changed, how the content has changed. And taking that idea and matching it with sort of Christian's work around um, sort of nationalism and, and society and so on, um, fake news cropped up almost, almost immediately, right, which is, you know, um, how does information um, and, and fake information affect society as, as a whole? The fake news to me looks pretty straightforward. You know, you look at it and it's either got good sources or it's not, or it's making yep. some wild claim or it's not. So how yep. did you guys approach it? So, so there's a couple of things really. So uh, first of all, we wanted to get a sense of people's understanding, um, so, so uh, an understanding of what people think news is, first and foremost. I mean, you know, news is different for everyone. I mean, so some people are interested in celebrities, some people are interested in politicians and so on. Uh, so to do that, we sent out a sort of survey um, to various uh, people 200 or so people, I think, and got a good sense of what people understand as what is news to them. Uh, so that gave us a, sort of the bigger picture. Then to really delve deeper into it, we started to look at doing some sort of more qualitative work, interviews with people and understanding um, sort of in, in the real world, how do they understand these things? So what we did was we put together a fake Facebook page, populated with a variety of different news articles. Some of them were real, some of them were fake, some of them from different uh, news sources and so on. And then we asked people to um, look through that news feed um, as if it were their own and sort of digest the information and try and identify what is the fake news in that space. Um, now, people make uh, a lot of decisions very quickly in sort of the digital space. You imagine yourself on a mobile phone, you'd be like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, next, next, next. So your, your Snapchat kind of consumption of things. Um, so really to break that down a little bit, we had to make use of some eye tracking technology. Uh, and the idea behind that is, is that if we can track someone's gaze on the computer, we can look at what information and what areas of the screen are they digesting as a part of that breakdown and analysis of their news. And what it allowed us to do was to see, okay, well, people, had a tendency, A, to look at the, the, the title of the news uh, article first and foremost, and then make, what you can see is they're making a kind of initial judgment at that point in time. Is this true or not? What, what's my feeling about it? Cows are fed skittles by farmers. Is that true or not? It, it, instantly, I'd feel, uh, you know, scepticism about that. Whereas if it said Trump has done something ridiculous again, probably more true. At that point in time, you'd say, okay, if I have some doubt about that, what people tend to do then is look at the source of the article, uh, which is the link, links above. And then if it's something from the BBC, people would typically say, yeah, okay, I, I believe that. If it's something from, um, oh, I can't think of any fake news like that. Well, what about like, yeah, satire? Sa yeah, sa satire, satire. Anything yeah. click, click based, click bait sort of thing. People would sort of consume, uh, understand at that point. Now, there were cases where Another micro judgment was made, which is where people would say, okay, well, I'm not sure about the article, I'm not sure about the source, they'll go into the article then and look more for more information. And that's when they'll start to look at things like dates, like the content, the way it's written, who is the author and so on. So you can start to really break down these kind of order, um, almost criteria that people are instantly using to make, make judgments about these things. Does, does this all sounds kind of very logical and very kind of... Uh... Um, uh, ordered. Yep. Do you think everybody does all those things? Um, people do it in different ways, um, but I think for the most part people do, and they may not even realise they're doing it. Um, and actually some people would look at the source first in an article as, as, as a part of their natural consumption of this information. Um, others then would 
skip over things broadly very quickly. Um, but I, I, I believe, based on the data we've got, that people are making these micro judgments, um, but, but very quickly. So. This is a video we recorded of some of the eye tracking that we did. So this is, this is the Facebook page. I'll, I'll just play it now. So you can see that the dots moving around is where someone's gaze is. And the circle gets bigger the longer they're looking at something. Um, so you can see this person's looking around the screen, they're looking at the source. Their eyes are jumping around the place because all the while this is happening, we're using what's called a sort of think aloud protocol. And that's where we're asking someone to look through this feed and talk out loud about what they're doing. So some real stuff mixed in. Yes, yes, yeah. You've got to try and make it as convincing as possible. Consuming media in this way, it's quite a private thing in a way, right? It's something you do on your own, there's no one around watching you do it. And so in the first instance, to ask someone to talk through the, the, the sort of logic of their thinking as they're looking through this stuff is kind of strange. It was, it was a bit odd, really. People aren't used to talking about it. Um, and actually, there's almost a level of discomfort that comes from talking about these things because you're being challenged on something that you're not normally challenged about. Uh, and for example, someone said to me, uh, well, well, when I've thought about this, I, I, I immediately think, yeah, I trust the BBC. I trust that as a news source. And then someone asks me, why do you trust that as a news source? And I think to myself, I'm not sure really. I kind of just just do. I, I kind of have trusted it for a long period of time, but I've never actually sat down and gone, why is it that I trust that as a new source? And that kind of question uh, people struggled with a lot uh, when, when challenged on these things. What is it that this research do you think will lead to? Where, where are we going with this? So there's a couple of things really. Um, I mean, the, the, the first is, is that we can look at and understand um, how people as a community verify news. So, you know, social media, shared space, people can comment on things. And actually a lot of um, uh, people's um, trust in news that they get is it's from their friend or our friends commented on or something. So it's kind of th th this trust thing. Um, but I guess where we're moving with this is really around um, how can technology support people in this space? And there's sort of two fronts to this. The first is, and we mentioned this earlier, is, is the idea of having algorithms that can um, assess uh, a news article based on a set of criteria, whether it's the source or the content of it, and then label it or, or label it with some kind of, um, uh, I don't know, fake um, indicator or fake index, some, some, some level of trust or confidence in, in that thing. Um, so the question in that space is, A, what algorithms do you trust? You have the same problem that you do with the sort of news sources, which is there will be different types of algorithm that work in different ways. How do you trust which, which news source? Secondly, then, is how do you present that information back to people? Is it appropriate to have um, that kind of indicator slapped onto a news, news article in, in, in your news feed? I mean, there's already tons of stuff going on in that, in that feed. You really want something else. But how would you represent that? Is it some kind of um, percentage, red, yellow, green? I don't know, some kind of indicator on that. The second then consideration is sort of the more social side of things, which is how do we support and enable people to continue to, as a crowd, as a group, to verify these things? Um, so often you'll find in news articles um, where there's some element of doubt. You look at the conversation and people are plowing in different sources, people are having that conversation, uh, and that's kind of another way to verify what's happening. How do you enable that community to continue to do that? And how do you embed that um, into the sort of the, the, the news article itself as well? So you could al almost imagine having some kind of algorithmic indicator, but then also some kind of social indicator that says, yeah, 20% of people that have read this article believe this to be true. How does that then influence someone's consumption of that media? Fake news isn't really anything new. It's just the speed of which it can travel, perhaps. Yep. I mean, you know, back when you were a child on the playgrounds, so one of your mates would tell you, you know, such and such and such has happened. Yep. And then you sort of make a, a judgment call as to whether you believed that based upon who it was who's telling you yep, and, yep. and who they'd heard it from. Yep, yep. Um, but this is technology that's causing it to be a bit of a problem. And also, by the sounds of it, there, there, are, there are agents out there who are trying to make make things change in certain yeah. places, aren't they? Do you think this is inherently about educating people? Or can we do anything at the source technologically? Um, Not that we can find the source necessarily. Perhaps that's the problem. I don't know. I mean, I, mean, I think you've got to be, the, 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 the Social media is inherently a social platform. And I think you've got to rely on people to govern that. Um, I'm not sure how much 
really technology can attack the source of those things. The, the problem is, is that technology, as you say, is enabling these things. And not only is it easier and faster to share information, but I or anyone can create very convincing looking news articles that look, look fake. So I'm not sure how you'd govern that. I think, I think it's, it's got to be a people driven um, governance of that. I believe Facebook have actually hired people to physically look at these sites and postings and things. So they're going back to people to do this. Yep. Do you think that machine learning and all sorts of you know clever computer algorithms could actually do some of this stuff? I, th I think they definitely could. Uh, I mean, you know, there's lot, plenty of sort of um, uh, opportunities through text analytics and sort of get gauges of, of what what the content's saying. What's interesting is that. Do those people that are reviewing those articles have any biases themselves? Does, does the organization behind them have any biases? And when you think about how much, in a way, control that organization has over the, the, the information that people are presented with, it gets a bit worrying then. So in that sense, yes, there should definitely be a place for machines to do that because they can be sort of unbiased in, in, in a way. So it's a heat map one. As you can see, lots of jumping around the screen. And is this using the same kit as the other one? So, same kit, so it's just a different representation. So some of it is just kind of almost the logistics of, oh, I need to scroll the page down, so Absolutely. I'll look at where the scroll is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, a lot, a lot of the time, people don't really realise um, what they are looking at and what they're not looking at. Yeah. Um, so we would, so not only would this allow, inform us about the, sort of these decisions and order they're making, but it's also a prompt for us to talk to them about it and say, did you realise you were doing this? Um, and so were you, were you watching this in real time? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, watching it in real time as they, as they were consuming and talking about it, yeah. And then what that would let us do then, as a part of the um, conversation, it would prompt and say, okay, well, I noticed what you just did there. Did you realise that you clicked the link first or, or so on? Yeah. Um, and it sort of helped really draw out um, what people are actually thinking in those moments. The first thing they see is the Facebook page we put together. Yeah. Um, and then we just said, okay, well, what you want to do is you want to look through the page as you would naturally, in, as best you can. So um, it looks like they look at the penguin photo. Yes, yeah, the pe pe penguin was interested. A lot of the time, uh, people are pausing to look and talk to people and the guy gaze moves back and forth. And actually, that, that's one of the challenges with eye tracking is maintaining that level of accuracy. Um, and a lot of, we, we used, um, eye tracking is very expensive, uh, upwards of 30 grand, you know. And a lot of the time people have to put their chin in something and that keeps their head straight and so on. Um, this is, the device we use is more of an affordable a tracker and actually it wasn't the, the accuracy of, oh, they're looking at this word or they're looking at, you know, this this, 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 it's not about that, it's just about the order within which they do things, which meant the accuracy of this was enough for us. And really it was, it was it's secondary to what our primary goal was, which is to understand what they think and what they talk about. So. One thing that was apparent to me just looking at that just then is how quickly the eye moves yes. between things. Yes. What, have you been able to slow that down and just do a bit more kind of in-depth look at it? Yes, so, so, so not, not yet, but we, we will do that. And yeah, we'll, we'll use the video, slow it right down, and you'll get that point to point to point to point order of where people people are looking. I wonder how much of it's conscious. <laughs> not not all of it, I don't think. I, I would expect a lot of it is, is, is un, unconscious, yeah. yeah. People have shared it, my friends have shared it, therefore it's true, rather than I'm in the news agent, that paper is one I trust, that one is one I don't trust. This is Facebook, so mm -hmm. right? It's, it's my friends who yeah. share this. The medium mattering more than the the, the, the message or the medium establishing a framework within which certain decisions become more likely than, than, than others. That's certainly my sense and I, if I'm honest, that was my sense at the outset of this.